Hi, in my last videos I have shown you how to implement a QMU PCI ECHO device and in today's video we are going to write the driver for it. So here you can see my QMU system call, I'm using the Vert 2.10 virtual machine, this is my custom self-compiled kernel and this is my root file system and here I'm adding our PCI ECHO device to it. And if I start this QMU session, I get this console and with LS PCI I can see here, this is the device for which I want to write the driver. And if I want to get more information about it, I have to pass this and VVV. And here you can see this device has two bars. The first bar is 16 bytes in size and, this, and has some functionality like an ID, an inverse pattern and a random value generator and bar 1 is mapped to 4 kilobytes in size and this is, can be used as a storage so if I write the value to it I should be able to read it back and bar 0 only supports 32-bit accesses but bar 1 should also accept 8-bit, 16-bit and 32-bit accesses. So let's write the driver for this device to test it out. And here in my QMU folder, I've created this GitHub repository PCI Echo device. And in this folder, you can find the following. So first you can find the source code for the PCI device, for the QMU PCI device. And you will also find the source code for our the driver we will develop in the next videos. Okay, so I will create a new file, I will call echodev-driver.c and in here I can implement my driver. And basically whenever you're writing a driver for any subsystem in Linux, what you have to do is always the same. First you have to um, create a list of IDs where you name the devices this driver is compatible with. Then you have to implement a probe and a remove function and then you have to pack the ID table, the probe and the remove function, the driver struct and register this driver struct to the kernel. So let's do this. So the first thing we need is we need some includes. We need linux slash init.h. We will need linux slash module.h and linux slash pci.h. And as I will need a delay for testing out our um, inverse pattern, I will include delay.h as well. Okay, so the first thing I need is I need the compatible device struct. So I will add a static struct from the type PCI device ID and I will call it echo IDs. And this is an array. But maybe first let's define the vendor ID, which is 1234 hexadecimal, and the device ID, which is B hexadecimal. And here in this entry, we will, we will declare a new PCI device with the vendor ID and the device ID. And that's basically it. At, at the end, we always need an empty, um, yeah, an empty element to indicate the end of the list, and with module. Um, device table, we make this device table known to user space. By the way, I, I have already done some more detailed videos about how to write PCI Express drivers. Of course, I will put a link to them to the description. So the next thing we need is we need to implement our probe function. I will call it echo probe. The first argument of this function is a struct from the type PCI device and I will I call it pdef and the second argument is a pointer to the entry here in this device table. So uh, device id id yes and if everything worked well I will return zero here and what I will do here first in the status variable and then I will also need two void pointers for my two bars. So with this IOMEM macro, I'm just saying this pointer is a pointer to IO memory. And I will call it pointer bar zero for bar zero and pointer bar one for bar one. Then I will call PCIM enable device to enable the device. And what this will do is it will enable 
access to the memory space of the device, which is locked by default on my QMU machine. I will show you this just in, when we are testing the driver. And in case this doesn't return zero, an error occurred. Driver error enabling device. And let's return the error code here. Okay, so our next, the next thing we have to do is we have to map the bars to our pointers. And we can do this by using the PCIM for managed IO map functions. So from our um, PCI device, we want to map bar zero and the length should be PCI resource len pdef zero. So this will return 16 for bar zero because the size of bar zero is 16. And now we will check if this has returned a null pointer, because if it did, if it does, we have an error here. Error mapping bar zero, and here I will return minus error no device. Okay, so let's do the same thing for bar one. So here I'm interested in bar one, and I want to map the size of bar one and in case this returns an error it will print out error mapping bar one. Okay cool. Now after we have the pointers we can access them. So first let's read out the ID register. ID and the ID register is located at um, bar zero at the start of bar zero. Okay, and then let's read out the random value. Here we have the offset C hexadecimal. And then we will test the inverse pattern. So with IO write, I will write the value to it. And I will write um, yeah, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. And I will write it to point to bar zero plus um, four. Then I will use M delay for, for getting a small delay and I will wait one millisecond and then I will read it back. Inverse pattern. And here I want to read four, of course. And the last thing we will do is we will do also a test on bar one. So therefore first I will use IO write 32 to write the value to it. And then we will read it back. But not only once, we will read it back three, time, three times, but with different access, access widths. So first I will do an IO read 8, so an 8-bit access. Then I will do a 16-byte access and last but not least a 32-byte access. Okay, and this is our probe function. So the last, so now we need a remove function. I will call it echo remove. This only has one argument from the type PCI device, a pointer to our current PCI device, and all I will do here is I will just print out something to the kernel's lock. Uh, removing the device. So, and that should be it. Now I have to, um, um, yeah, declare my driver struct. I will call it echo driver. So the name will be echo dev driver. And I misspelled echo. Then the probe function will be echo probe. The remove function will be echo remove. And the ID table is echo IDs. And now with module register or PCR module. Ah. Um, 
and with um, p a module PCI register, I'm registering the driver echo driver. And then last but not least, I have to give my module a license and I will use the GPL here. Okay, so now let's try to implement the make file for this. So we are adding, um, we are adding our echo dev driver dot o to the modules which should be built. Then we need an R target. Here we'll we'll call the make file Linux. Let me check. So here this Linux version. And we will um, add our current path to the path at which it should build, look for modules and we'll call the target module. And we will also add a clean target, which is just the same. The only difference is now we are calling the target clean. Okay, so now let me try to build it with, for ARM with this com compiler. And let's see if I made some mistakes. Yes, I did. I did. Yeah, here I have a typo. And this is IO write 8 and here I have also a typo. Yeah, this looks fixable. IO write, this IO write 32, good. Um, PF, this should be PDEF and not PF. <laughs> and here as well. And then I have a capital T where I should have a smaller T, okay. So now let me try to build it again. Okay. Uh, module PCI, oh, driver, not register. And here, okay. So two more errors. And this is not register, this is driver. Okay, <laughs> you try, but now it's looking good. Now I will um, copy my echo driver kernel object into my rootfs, then I will go into the rootfs and I will pack it. And then we can try our driver with QMU. So let's start up QMU with our PCI echo device. Okay, it has booted and if I look here, I have my driver available. So, and if I'm executing this driver, or if I'm loading this driver, you can see the PCI enable function does the following. It enables the device and it sets bit two of the command register, which is the memory space enable bit. Then it's it's reading the ID, which is coffee offy. Offy is German for monkey, by the way. Then it reads the random register, which gives us a random value. It writes the inverse pattern and we can read back the inverse value. And then it writes this pattern to bar one, it offset zero, and it reads it back one time eight bit access, then 16 bit access, and 32 bit access. If I take a look at the loaded modules, we can see our echo driver is loaded. And if I remove it, I should see one more print to the kernel slot, and now no modules are loaded. Okay, cool. So this was how to write a simple driver for our um, custom PCI device. In the next video, I will add IO control calls to this driver. So I guess that that's it for today. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.